Hi, I'm Renisha Gentle and welcome to a special edition of the Gentle Perspective highlighting the Belize Municipal Election that's coming up on March 3rd. Please click the subscribe button below, leave a like and of course feel free to comment. Stay tuned. <music> Hand problems from the Barrow administration after 13 consecutive years in power. But that isn't stopping them from creating their own and receiving negative sentiments from Belizeans. The first order of business for the Brasenia administration even before getting into power was how they would be able to strategize and effectively manage COVID. In we were Belize. shocked to learn that there is no real plan to contain the spread of the virus. Cabinet instructed the Minister of Health to meet with his technical team and advisors to develop a comprehensive plan to address the spread of this virus. And then there's the halt on the pantry program that has since ceased or ceased and then resumed, but now bearing less items than it did before. The assistance coming out of the, your ministry for persons affected by COVID, where does that stand at this time? Does that assistance continue? It will continue, but we have put a small pause because we want to make a review. There are actually two different programs. What we used to call the pantry, and by the way, that word is abolished. We're calling it grocery bag now. So we have the grocery bag, but then you also have the food assistance under the COVID emergency regulations. Now, we, we want to help the people who need it most, but clearly as a new administration, um, we have to make a little bit of review. It won't stop right now, but clearly the policy decisions going forward will have to be made by cabinet. And I will take my instruction from cabinet, but I can speak to say that we have paused to make certain reviews as to the suppliers, the distributors, and the recipients. And then, of course, in the usual political fashion, there is nepotism. We've noted over a dozen government appointments of relatives or siblings of ministers to senior posts. The appointment of several close relatives of elected PUP officials to statutory bodies, including the Social Security Board, has raised many eyebrows as concerns about nepotism have arisen. You'd think after 13 years of bashing the United Democratic Party while on the opposition, Prime Minister John Brasenio would take keen on his own words, but to no avail. And then there is a holy grail and supposedly misinterpreted statement from the Prime Minister that Belize has limited talent <laughs> well, you can guess by that alone that the backlash was won for the Being books. out there, sir. I think that the question that we need, to, that I would rather you ask about the quality of the people that I am appointing. And I believe that I have appointed with consultations with the different ministers and ministries and everybody else, people that are qualified. Now, if I have just appointed people just because they are family member from minister or my friend or whatever and they're not qualified then i think you have every right to be able to make a case but when you're looking at just say 20 out of hundreds of people that we have to apply belize is a small society we have limited talent um and so we have to use what we best have to put a great big bow on this gift that some of us want to take back to the store there is the ongoing debacle with Dr. Marvin Manzanero, who has since garnered the hearts of Belizeans here and abroad for his diligence and communication when it relates to being a pivotal figure within the COVID fight since the arrival of it here in Belize. So the current story is that Dr. Manzanero is on administrative leave this is following rumors of his termination and the appointment of Melissa Musa. Some may question, is this going against public service regulation?
I was informed by him that on returning to work, he returned to no office. Nobody spoke to him. Nobody had any discussion with him as to what would have happened to him. As the, the position is, if it is that he was not able or they did not want him, or whatever reason it would, there is still a process that needed to have been followed as it relates to him as a substantive holder of the position of director. Of and for those of us who are all too well familiar with the realities, it's just plain old politics. <sighs> the PUP administration is clearly in an unrealistic state of comfort. They may be of the belief that their landslide victory back in November has made them immune. Well, they will walk right out of their chanclas if they wear it to loosely for this next big dance, the Belize municipal election, which is just a couple days away. Has their first hundred days in office given comfort or downright anxiety to the Belizean people? Moreover, how will this sentiment towards the government and their actions translate in the polls? If people feel like this government needs a babysitter, they will send UDP safeguards in the form of councillors and mayors in an effort to balance the scales. There are 160 candidates contesting the municipal election come March 3rd. Here in Belize City, the most popular municipality, we have a very eager and well-known UDP slate who are out for blood in an effort to achieve any semblance of power that was ruthlessly snatched away from them back in November, going up against a fresh-faced PUP collective who are imbibing on the prize call that was won at the fair. I would not be surprised if there is a mixed slate throughout several municipalities, yes, including Belize. Under the theme, everybody have a win, while the city to get Bill back. But, that's just the gentle perspective. Stay tuned for part two and a post-mortem of the municipal election that will be occurring on March 3rd. And don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and of course, feel free to comment. Until part two of this episode, stay safe.